Okay, we are recording. Thanks everyone for joining me and Linda on today. We're finally going to get this started and share these fantastic pencils with you. Uh, so nevertheless, let's just go ahead and jump right in. Welcome, Linda. Thank you so much for being on the show tonight or being on the live tonight. So let's just jump right into it. Can you tell us about these quality pencils for those that haven't heard the podcast and how it came to be. I started the company private labeling for other cosmetic companies to their specifications and to their requirements and um, decorating so it looked like theirs. And so I would buy from my factory looking like their cosmetics and just resell to them. And I was just kind of the middle person. So I've learned so much about ingredients and what works and what doesn't work and what I like and what the factory recommends to me that I came out with my own brand. So we took out all of the known taboo ingredients that just don't need to be in there. And we came out with a beautiful natural formula that's waxes and pigments. So people that, um, say I can't use anything because you know I get an allergic reaction or I get puffy or redness have told me that they're able to use my product because it doesn't uh, I, you know aggravate them right. so you know but people can be allergic to anything so all I can go by is what people tell me and it seems that you know a lot of people that have issues with other companies don't have issues with my pencils which is great yeah, I was just thinking that, and I love that, and that's why I wanted us to get together tonight and demo the pencils and talk about them, um, because I just know that it's hard um, for women, especially, like, to find a good um, pencil that doesn't have the chemicals in it, the allergens, or if you're, like, some that have been through chemo, um, you know, and they lose their eyebrows and things, and then for women that um, they have thyroid problems, uh, or even the women that have alopecia, and they, they're losing their, their, their eyebrows and eyelashes. And so I was like, this is perfect because it gives them color, something accessorized, and it still give them that look and feel um, to look beautiful. So I wanted to just bring to them an option um, and let them know about your pencils. And so tonight we're going to be um, demoing the pencils and talking about them. Linda has over 30 pencils. I've even got some. So I'm going to go ahead and try <laughs> some on for you, for you guys tonight. Um, so where do you, where do you want to get started, Linda? Like, what's next? What do you want to um. do? Well, the, the brand has the 30, the 30 pencils mm -hmm. and what's very ingenious, it was my husband's <laughs> idea, was to put the sharpener right into the pencil cap. So no matter where you're putting your, your makeup on, you always have your sharpener right there so you can just twist and get a nice clean, um, clean pencil. So even if somebody's borrowing it, you can get it um, fresh and clean again by sharpening it. So um, even, you know, makeup artists, it's nice. The twist-up pencils, some people prefer the twist-ups, but you can't get it to be um, as clean because you're not sharpening. So mm. sharpening really is a way to really have a nice, fresh, clean um, core when you're applying. Mm -hmm. so, so that's nice. Now, the philosophy of the company is to use a light color on the top, Mm -hmm. and your dark seductive color underneath your eye. So if you look at all the different colors, we have a gold and a baby blue and a mint green and a pink and mm -hmm. a silver. So there are a lot of colors that you can use on the top and you don't have to match your wardrobe. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be matchy matchy. What this is going to do is brighten up the eye area and make your eye appear larger and brighter. And then you accentuate underneath the eye with any of the dark seductive colors to, to format and to um, frame the eye. Mm -hmm. It's also some of the colors, for instance, the brownie you can use and smudge. Where are you? In the eyebrow. So you can use the, if you don't have eyebrows, your eyebrows have faded, or I know in my generation, having pin thin eyebrows was the phrase, 
And so a lot of people's eyebrows never grew back because of that, not because of medical issues, just because right. you plucked and plucked and plucked and plucked. So having, an eye, having a pencil to fill in the eyebrow was also very nice. So the brownie, no matter how, what color your hair is, the brownie seems to work or the meteor seems to work and you're not drawing a line like you would for an eyeliner, you kind of want to feather the pencil. So you're taking it and you're just feathering it, not really drawing a line, mm -hmm. you're feathering it so you're getting a much softer look and then you can blend it with the brush. So if you look at the different color combinations, you can choose any light color. Mm -hmm. We have uh, the mint sparks. There are six colors that are the sparks colors and they all have a subtle glitter to them. Mm -hmm. So you can use um, one with the sparks or a plain color. So here we have the plain mint color and you can use that above the eye. So you're accentuating above the eye. I don't know if you can see this. And then we have a denim blue, which can go underneath the eye to accentuate. So you're having the light color on the top and the mm -hmm. dark or medium color on the bottom to make the eye appear larger and um, accentuate the shape of your eye. And this works for any shaped eye. If you mm -hmm. have very heavy eyelids or a small eyelid or a big eyelid, um, if you really can't see your eyes, you have deep set eyes, mm -hmm. wearing a light color will open up the eye and make it appear larger. Mm -hmm. So it works for any shaped eye for any, anybody. Now, what about those, um, the oily eyelids? Because, you know, throughout the day, I'm one of those oily eyelidders. So what can I do um, to combat that so to make sure the eyeshadow stays in, sh in place? The, the best thing to do is to look at what you're using to remove your makeup. If you're using something that leaves an oil residue, mm. it's going to add to the oil that may naturally come out. Translucent powder is made for that exact purpose. So before you put on your powder, you want to prime your canvas with a light dusting of translucent powder. Mm. Then you apply your color, whatever that might be, and then you lightly dust with the translucent powder again to set the color. And that will keep you fresh all day. If you find that you're getting oily during the day, you may want to take your translucent powder with you in a press form, but use a big fluffy brush and gently dust it over the color again. Okay. So that will help with any oily issues as powder is going to absorb the oil. Okay. And then I was also liking what you were saying about um, going on very lightly with your pencil. I was going to say also um, they can use like a mascara one to kind of soften it as well and to make it flare out. Uh, yes, as as absolutely. I, yeah. The mascara brush, without the mascara, of course, just right. the brush yeah, to blend the brush. and smooth. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's a great, a great tool. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and start. I forgot to bring a mirror in front of me, so I'm going to have to use my phone as the mirror and draw this on. But I know, like, a lot of people, um, especially they're, like, really big with the brows. And I really like um, the versatility of the pencil because it's more than just the eyeliner. You can use this for eyeshadow. You can fill in the brows. Um, you can even use a little bit of a blush if you need to, if you don't even have that. So I like that, that it's a multi-use. And I definitely like it because it was really soft. Like when I did the swatches um, on my arm, I really like how it just glided on versus yes. some of those harder pencils. And then sometimes you have to put it near something warm to light it, to warm it up or use the tips of your finger to yes, soften the, it up. You know what I'm talking about? The, the key to a, a quality pencil is that it glides on silky smooth. The points are stiff enough that they won't break, but soft enough that you don't have to keep going back and forth and back and forth to repeat the line. And then, so I wanted to share, like with people, like, so when you're drawing on your eyebrows first of all your eyebrows they're supposed to be sisters not twins and <laughs> so it's okay if they don't match perfectly but a good rule of thumb that i like to share 
is that you always want to start, you know where to start the eyebrow starts because you just take the pencil and you line it up right here with the corner exactly, of your nose. nose. Yeah, and then you go then the to the Perfect. outer corner of your eye. And so that's how you know how far to draw it on, where it should stop. And um, I know that happens a lot, well, especially if you have um, alopecia and your hair is going, like your brows are going, but um, especially if you have thyroid issues, so that's really good. And there's a lot of people um, that have thyroid issues, of the, if they haven't, you know, removed them from waxing, like you mentioned earlier, the tips of the corner, like, like our, it's so fine there and like the hair is almost gone. So you can draw it back in. Now also when you're looking straight on it yourself mm -hmm. and you put the, the pencil straight up and down, that's where the arch is. Yeah. So that's where the point of the arch should be. And so you're going up to that point and then you're going back down to the end of the eye. My camera went out. <laughs> okay. So if you want a softer look, you want to do mm -hmm. light feathery strokes, not drawing a line, light feathery strokes. Exactly. And that would give so you a softer like a, look. And then you can use your spoolie yeah, wand or your brush to blend. Versus me just doing that hard line like that. Just tap, tap, tap. They look good. I can't You're see. Coming even more gorgeous. <laughs> and you were talking about taking one of our lighter colors. So now this is the blue. This is the sky. The so sky, what yeah. And you can use that on the upper lid as close to the lash line as you can. And what you want to do, I don't know if you could do because you're holding your phone, mm -hmm. is hold your your eye. You want to hold your eye. Mm -hmm not pulling but just hold it firm and then you can start drawing from the outside in and then from the inside out so you'll meet in the middle beautiful that way you can keep right up to the lash line and keep it nice and thin and you'll get a nice amount of color and i'll do the other side so just pull it taut not too Tight. Not too much, just a little bit so any kind of, uh, you don't want the skin to be moving while you're drawing. Okay. Can you see it? Yes. Am I pressing hard enough? Okay. Okay. And then I can't remember, did you say like one of the browns or a darker color? What were we saying a few minutes ago? Um, what kind of color do you like? The boysenberry is a deep dark blue purple. Maybe for the camera, just to be able to see it, maybe the emerald green, a green emerald color. Green. Because just for camera, you'll, they'll be able to see that color better. Okay, so this is Liberty. Okay, Emerald City? Yes. Okay. I think this was one of my favorite ones. And then just do it in the middle. Is there a certain way we should apply these in the middle? Same kind of thing. You're holding the eye taut and you want to go from the outside in and the inside out. Okay. Oh, I thought you were going to line underneath the eye. You're using it as a shadow. That's great. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. No, you can do that right in the crease and then you can use your finger or a brush to, to, to blend it and smudge it. Yeah, I bought some brushes down. And we can do a different color from the inside out if you wanted to. Like the purple passion you can use on the on the uh, the front of the lid, more towards the nose. Where's the purple passion? I got amethyst. Passion. Okay, purple passion. Yes. And where did you say to use this one? The purple, the purple passion. Purple passion in the front, more towards, okay. more towards the nose on the lid as eyeshadow as well. Can you see it? Yeah. 
And then you said we can use either a finger. Yeah, you can use your finger or a little brush just to blend to blend the color. Is it blending well or do I need a little bit more? You see that there's a lot of pigment in the color, so you can really see the color beautifully. And I, that's what I love. I love colors that pop and just glide on. That's like my favorite. And they show up on all skin tones. So if you're very pale skinned or very dark skinned, the colors will, will pop no matter what skin tone. And then you were saying, same thing That's underneath the eye, do I hold it hot? Right, correct. Now you see the, the sparks colors with the subtle glitter you can use on the outside of the eye. But in the waterline, which is inside the eye, Mm -hmm. You won't want to use the glitter colors in there, but any of the other colors you can use in there. So if you use the white or the buff, the snow white or the buff, mm -hmm. the beige color, that you can use in the waterline, which again makes the eye pop and look larger. Okay. And then for the ladies that um, don't have any eyelashes, you want to use the darker colors on both the lash line and then underneath because then it gives you the illusion that you do have lashes. That you have lashes, exactly, yes. So then you use a darker color, the, you know, a black or a dark brown yeah. to give the illusion of the lashes, yes. Is it showing up? Did I go heavy enough? Maybe I need to do the water line, like we said, so you can see it. Uh, what do we say for the water line? Do the onyx or the boysenberry. The boysenberry is a deep, dark blue purple. That would look pretty. Okay, this is snow. You said, um, what does it look like? What's that color? The snow is the white. Mm -hmm. That's for someone who does have the lashes, and if you don't have the lashes and you want to give the illusion of having lashes, mm -hmm. you would use the dark color in the waterline up top in the waterline and underneath. Okay. How come when we put the, the liner on, we always have our mouths open? <laughs> <laughs> It's very true. Even when I'm watching, <laughs> even when I'm watching you, I have my mouth open. <laughs> okay. Can you see it? Yes, you can see it. It looks beautiful. You've done this before. And then, so now I got to do the other eye so I don't be just one-sided here. You got to complete the look. Um, well, should I try different colors so they can yeah, see? Yeah, try different colors. Eye? That way you get to experiment. There's 30 different colors to choose from. You might as well try different ones. Um, so we'll go again. I guess maybe I'll try the the pink lady this time on the lid because that's that's the one you were talking about that was a light color, right? Light on the yes. lid. Okay. So again, we're going to hold the eye taunt and then we'll take the pencil. Go so from the outside different. in and then the inside corner out. Beautiful. Now we made, we made kind of a chart, which is you can find on the website as well, that talks about if you have um, red hair or blonde hair or brunette hair, what colors would go good for you. So it helps you choose colors. And if you want to do a smoky eye or a glamorous eye or um, cool tones or warm tones or a dramatic eye, we gave suggestions on what colors to choose. So that also gives you a little help. If, um, you know, you're not sure what colors to choose from. That's so we awesome. made a little chart which you can find that's on the website. A website. lot of people don't know that, so that's awesome. Yeah. It doesn't mean those are the colors you have to wear, but it just helps you to choose to start. And once you get more familiar, then you'll, you know, try new things and think outside the box. Mm-hmm. I, I did the, the, the pink, pink lady. lady. So what color should I go with next? Maybe should a, a blue or what are you thinking? The, the nutmeg is a very pretty brown with a gold undertone. Okay, let me look for that. Pink and brown looks very pretty together. 
Okay. Oh, here's Netmic. Okay. I think this was one of my favorite ones too. And that one just glides right on. And I love how it just pops right up. And I like it because, you know, some ladies, they don't want, um, I guess, that dark pigment look so you can make it as dark or as light as you want. And I like that as well. And it still gives you uh, a little color. Yeah. And I, and I like that. And with these pencils, they're really blendable. So you can blend any colors together and you can make it as dark or as light as you want. And then sometime if you want, you can also, um, sometime what I've seen the ladies do is they highlight under the brows. And they can use, a, again, another lighter color and just trace underneath the brow. Right under the brows is very nice. The pink champagne. Pink champagne. Uh, champagne. It's a champagne sparks. It's almost no color. It's all glitter. And that looks really nice under the brows or even sometimes on the upper cheek line. Oh, I you see can, it right here. You can put some, some of the color because it shows up as almost no color, just, and then you're going to blend that. Okay. So you just see a little subtle glitter. So when the light hits it, it reflects the light. So that's nice underneath the brow or up on the cheekbone. I like that. Pull a little bit up here too. You know, you're taking, you're using the colors and you're taking away from your problem areas mm -hmm. and you're accentuating the positive, which is wonderful because you'll feel good on the inside, you'll look great on the outside, and it gives you an inner confidence. And it's fun to play with all the colors. Yes. Now, you feel good on the inside. If you don't like using your fingers, like she said, you always can use your brush as well. So I did bring down a brush, but this is probably too heavy of a brush. But I could have a a blending brush. Like I have something like this, this little tip. You can also use it to blend your colors together, like if you don't like to use your fingers. Absolutely. And soften it out. So Linda, do you have like any tips like from those day looks? Cause I love how you can versatile the pencils are, and you know, you can go from the, the day look to the night look. So like, what are some tips like when they want to transition from that, like say they got off work and they want to go to a party or out to dinner? It's really the amount of color that you're putting on and how much okay. you're blending. Yeah, you know, when, you, when you're going out in the evening, you just want things to pop a little bit more, you want a little bit more color than you would during the day when you're at your office, you know, mm -hmm. in daylight lighting and, and being a little more conservative when you're at work. But the colors, with the how you apply it, either drawing a line or feathering a little bit is going to give you different looks by adding more pigment or less pigment color. Now I gotta finish the other eye because <laughs> I think this is the one I had. Let's see. Here I go with that mouth open again. And then I think I had snow in the, the water line. Try the buff this time, the beige on the water line. It's a little less bright. Oh yeah, okay, so it's this one.
to make my eyes look bigger? <laughs> yes, it does. There's another little secret. If you have some darkness in the corner here and in the mm -hmm. corner here, if you put a dot of the buff or the white right mm -hmm. in here or in here mm -hmm. and blend it in, it, again, it's going to reflect the light. So lightness pushes out where darkness pushes in. Just like it, when you contour the cheek, you put a darker color underneath the cheek mm -hmm. to give you the illusion of cheekbones, high cheekbones. And then you put your blush color on and then the highlighter above it where you use the um, Champagne Sparks glitter already. It's the same thing in the corner. It's going to brighten and open up the eye and get rid of some of that darkness. Lovely. I like that. Yeah, I'm all about getting rid of that darkness. <laughs> It's all creating illusions of light and darkness. I feel off. Mm, my pencil. I love it. This is going really smooth. And then now let's talk about uh, this as well, because I know with this being natural makeup, uh, so when you go to remove it, like I would always just suggest that you have like a cotton round, but what do you suggest to remove the makeup? To remove the Something makeup? that's not going to leave you oily. Any cleanser okay. will remove the product. Okay. Um, you're going to have to, you know, move it around a little bit to, to break the seal because you've had it on all day and you may have used your, your setting powder to set it, but any kind of a, a cleanser will remove it. And it is, there is no paraben, no petroleum and no gluten in the products, just so you're aware of that as well, which is nice. Yeah, I love that especially, um, so that's why I was like just recommending like those that, because it seems like now like everything that we put on our bodies, there's always some sort of chemical or some sort of allergen in it and so it's nice to be able to have some makeup that you can actually put on it's not tested on animals it's healthy actually and oh yeah so let's talk about that because i think um i don't even think we got into the ingredients because if they didn't listen to the podcast they didn't listen to uh, the formulation of it so let's talk about formulation that. is waxes so you have every pencil is made with waxes so you have um, beeswax and you have different waxes to hold the, the pencil together which gives you the ability to have it glide on mm -hmm. without the points you know flattening and, and, and uh, you know breaking and then you have your pigments which is what is going to add the color to your skin mm -hmm. so the combination is very um, it, it's hard to do because you don't want it to have spots where there's no pigment coming on and spots where there's um, just, it's too waxy. So we've, we've found how to make that a beautiful blend between the wax and the color. So you glides on beautifully and you're getting the pigment and there's no spots with no color. And uh, that's, that's the whole formula is just waxes and pigments. And uh, the beeswax is natural and we have natural pigment colors. I love it. Did you see how smooth it's going on on my hand, the back of my hand as I put it? Can you you see can't that? see your hand, no. Oh, you can't see it? Yeah, now we can see the colors, yeah. Okay. They're just gliding on so smooth. I love it. There's beeswax, carnauba wax, um, castor seed oil, azokarite. Those are our waxes. Mm -hmm. And then we have different pigments. And then the sparks has a mica in it, which is what gives you the little flecks. If you look at the orchid sparks, it's a beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, yep, that's the one I just color. have. Yes, and, it, and you can see it has a subtle glitter in it. Yes. It's really a very unique, different kind of color. I like that. I like that on my skin tone. That's really pretty. So a lot of the colors are not the ordinary colors you'd see in the marketplace. They're tweaked to be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So, you know, most cosmetic companies, they'll have four or five colors, a black, a brown, a navy, a yeah. green, and a, and a blue. But ours are very different. They're not the normal colors that you would see in the, in the marketplace. 
and it goes nicely with all of the, the fashions that are out there now because you're not wearing, you know, standard colors anymore. So mm -hmm. like and, you said, you can blend them together. And they can still use um, your eye, regular eyeshadow too. Like say if they're still an eyeshadow girl and it's like, you know what, I still want a little bit more. These can be blended with your eyeshadow as well. Yeah, you would put the pencil on first and then the like using your translucent powder, your powder eyeshadow will stick to the pencil and you'll even get a more vibrant eyeshadow color, which is mm. gorgeous. I yeah. didn't know that. Yes. Even the colors that are on your hand, if you put mm -hmm. some eyeshadow on top of that, you'll okay. see how it sticks. It'll stick to the, the, the wax in the pencil and you'll get even a more vibrant color. You want me to put it on the brush or the pencil? Put it on your hand. Put the eyeshadow color on your hand over the pencil, on top okay. of the pencil. I'll just do a bright, a light bright color. There you go. You got. You kind of changed it up a little bit. Gave it like a little different look. Yes. Depending upon how much you're using. If you wanted to just adhere, you're just gonna pat it over. Okay, just like pat that. Over the, pat over the line, not everywhere, right? Okay. And it gives it a little different look. Yeah. It's as creative as you want to be. It's it's all about just playing and being creative and feeling good about the colors that you're using. Mm-hmm. I love it. So Linda, can you tell them how do we get in touch? Like they want it interested in buying and getting some sets or pencils. My website is um, www.pencilmeincosmetics.com. Mm -hmm. And we have a retail side of the site and a wholesale side of the site. So if you have a salon or a store or a boutique and you would like a display mm -hmm. with the pencils for resale, you can do that. It's um, $3.50 is wholesale and the suggested retail is $6.99. So everybody will make their, you know, their markup and you can buy the pencils on the retail side of the site for $6.99. Mm -hmm. And we also have um, the testers that come with the displays. So your customers can test the product on their hands and see the different colors before they purchase. So every, all 30 testers come with a display prepack. I love it. Yeah. Now I'm gonna make sure I put that for you the link to what she just said down in the description so you guys can reach out to her and talk to her and get set up. So well I thank you so so much for doing our show today, Linda, and coming this on was and fun. Talking You're quite you. a makeup artist. I'm very <laughs> proud of you. So this is good. Okay, guys. So you guys take care and have a great evening, and we will talk soon. Thank you so much. Bye now.